Section 9.4, we are gonna, going to now use square roots to solve quadratic equations. If you've been up with us for 9.2, 9.3, we've solved by graphing, we've solved by factoring. There's a couple more options, but now we're going to solve quadratic equations using square roots. Where do square roots fall into this? In our order of operations, PEMDAS, you know how I feel about that. It's not really true because this M doesn't come before D and A doesn't always come before S. And, you know, but parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. When we solve, we end up going up the ladder backwards, doing any adding and subtracting first, any multiplying and dividing. And now we are finally working our way up to exponents. What do I mean by that? This part you don't really have to write down if you don't want to, but just a friendly reminder on working PEMDAS backwards. If it's an addition problem, and we're trying to find a piece of the problem, which is true algebra, finding x, we do the exact opposite. If it's adding, we subtract. Subtracting eliminates the 4 for us to isolate the variable x. But whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must also do to the other side. So if it was plus, we now have to minus from both sides. If it was minus, we now have to add to both sides because we know that 16 minus 4 is 12, or 8 plus 4 is 12. If it was multiplication, we would then divide. Divide by 4, divide by 4, because we know that x equals 3, meaning 4 times 3 is 12. And if we had a combination of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and or dividing, it goes in order of adding and subtracting first, do the exact opposite, you get 4x equals 4, <laughs> and then you divide or multiply depending on the problem, and you get x equals 1. Because 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 plus 8 is 12. So that's what it looks like when we solve equations, but so far we've only made it up to add, subtract, multiply, divide, we haven't had to use the exponents in there. Well, now here it comes. We will be solving a problem like 2x squared equals 8. If you have 2x squared equals 8, you're going to have to do any adding and subtracting first, which isn't there, multiplying and dividing next, and then exponents. All right? We don't have any adding and subtracting, so let's start with division. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Our goal is to still isolate the variable. It's almost isolated. We do have x by itself with coefficients, but there is an x squared, which means x isn't completely isolated. Well, remember, if we flip back to the other page, the opposite of adding is subtracting. Multiply, multiply, divide. If it's divide, you multiply. If it's subtract, you add. What do we do with a square? We take a square root. A square and a square root cancel each other out. You might remember that from our radicals unit. But again, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side of the equation. So right now you're thinking, all right, that's easy enough. The square root of 4 is 2. But there's actually more to it than that. Because you've already solved equations by factoring. You've already solved equations by graphing. And you know that a quadratic equation is a parabola. If a quadratic equation is a parabola, that means not only does our parabola hit at 2, 1, 2, but it also hits at negative 2. Now, how does that work mathematically? If you try to take the square root of 4, use your squared button right here, but hit second, the square root of 4 is 2. But if we work it backwards, what is 2 squared? 2 squared is 4. What is negative 2, as long as you use your parentheses, squared, that also is 4. So when we take the square root of 4, how do we know if they want the positive answer or the negative answer? Because both of them work. 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is 4. So we have to come up with both answers, 2 and negative 2. Sometimes written like this, Sometimes written, again, you've seen this before on our radical unit, as x equals plus or minus 2. You've got to have the x equals showing what we're solving for, and then that can show your, your two answers. 
So there will always be two answers, right? No, of course not. There's not always two answers because sometimes we only have one answer. When do we have only one answer? When the parabola only hits the equation, or hits the graph x-axis once. What does this look like? m squared minus 18 equals negative 18. I'm going to add 18 to both sides. Those cancel. I get m squared equals 0. We're not done. It's not the end of the road. m squared can equal 0, and we can square root this, but the only difference is you would never tell me that your answer is a positive 0 and a negative 0. What the heck is a negative 0? And what even is a positive 0? m equals 0. 0 is 0 is 0. If you're looking at the degrees on a thermometer, here's 0. Then you go up 1, 2, 3, or you go down however many degrees. Same thing on a number line. There's not two different zeros. You don't have a positive 0 and a negative 0. So in that case, you would have a single answer of 1. And remember, like I said, that means that our parabola came down, hit the ground, went back up, and only hit the graph one time instead of hitting it twice. And I'll give you a third option before we practice a bunch of these. What if b squared plus 14 equals 5? We know that this is a subtraction problem. We're going to minus 14 from both sides because it was an addition problem. Do the inverse operation. b squared, 5 minus 14 is negative 9. And right away, those of you that do this in your head say, oh, it's 3 and negative 3 because 3 times 3 is 9 and so is, but it's not. If you square root both sides and you try as hard as you possibly can, to square root a negative 9. If, depending on which math program you use, if you try to cheat it on a computer, it might tell you an imaginary number. If you do it on the calculator or in your brain, you get a domain error. You can't take the square root of a negative number because there are no two numbers that when multiplied together the same that come out negative. So there is no b equals, and your answer is just no solution. There is no solution to this graph because our graph came down, hit ground, went back around, back up at the vertex, but it never made it all the way down to the x-axis. So we could have two answers, positive and negative. We could have one answer of zero, or we could have no answers. Let's try it with a fraction. What happens if you take the square root of a fraction? So this is a multiplication problem. 4, z squared equals 9. I'm going to divide by 4 and divide by 4. But if I take 9 divided by 4 on a calculator, I get a decimal. Decimal's not cool. We don't use decimals in algebra as much as we can. 2.25. So instead what we do is we now square root the z squared. Square rooting the z squared gives us just a z. But when you square root a fraction, you square root each numerator and denominator separately. So instead of the square root of 9 fourths, you take the square root of 9 and the square root of 4. The 9 is the numerator, the 4 is the de denominator. And don't forget, this is on a graph. And it is a square root. You could have a positive 3 halves or a negative 3 halves. And that's how you'll answer the question. If you have to square root a fraction, square root them each separately. Now, some of you are super handy with a calculator and you're good at fractions on a calculator because why wouldn't you be if it does it all for you? You could actually hit square root. So it looks like that with a parenthesis. And then instead of doing 9 divided by 4, come up here and hit your fraction button. A, B, C. 9 fraction 4 before you close your parentheses. If you use a fraction button, it'll give you close to the answer, 1 and a half. We know that 3 halves is the same as 1 and a half. You don't like that? Hit second up here, yellow button. Hit your fraction button again, and that tells you it's going to turn it into an improper fraction for you. So a little bit more work, but the better you get at using fractions on your calculator, the less you'll have to use fractions in your head. 
And what do we do with decimals? I just said, no, we don't like decimals, but sometimes it's inevitable. You just got to gotta use them. So this time we have a multi-step equation. We have 3x squared minus 11 equals 7. First, you're going to have to add 11 to both sides, which gives you 3x squared equals 18. Then you divide by 3. You have to do that next. We're getting x is isolated, most isolated as we possibly can. 18 divided by 3 is 6. But when you try to square root a 6, it's not a perfect square. So we're going to use this little approximation button instead of an equals button. We're going to type in the square root of 6. Square root of 6, make sure you use the right button. And round to the nearest hundredth is the direction, so 2.45, 2.45. And I'm going to leave a little space here in front of the 2.45 because don't forget when you have an x squared, it is a parabola. And if it hits at 2.45, it also is going to hit at negative 2.45. So every once in a while, you're going to have a decimal. They're not all perfect squares. All right, so you've seen one of each example. What if it's a positive whole number? You have a plus and a minus. What if it's zero? What if it's no solution? What if it's a fraction? And what if it's a decimal? Let's try them all on our own. C squared minus 27 equals 9. I'm going to pause it. You're going to pause it. And you're going to try these on your own. Don't cheat and just watch me do it because then you won't learn it. Try it out. See if you can get the right answer. Add 27, square root. Don't forget there's two answers. C equals positive and negative 6. All right, try the next one. You've got 5w squared plus 12 equals negative 8, which means it's a two-step solving equation. Try it. You minus 12, got negative 20. Divided by 5, got negative 4. But then you reminded yourself you can't square root a negative, so there's no solution. <coughs> C, how about 2x squared plus 11 equals 11? When you minus 11 from both sides, you get 0. You could just skip the next steps, next two steps, and be like, ah, the answer is going to be 0. You could continue on, divide by 2, you get x squared equals 0, and then make sure you square root both sides. But as soon as you got 2x squared equals 0, then you know that x is going to have to equal 0. It's the only way for it to work. So take a shortcut if you recognize it. D, try this one. Divide by 25. Don't get a decimal. Leave it as a fraction. x squared equals 16 25ths. Square root the numerator. Square root the denominator. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. You have a positive or negative 4 fifths. After all that work, don't forget the plus or minus. You need them both. And lastly, we're rounding to the nearest hundredths. We'll do two of these. Try them on your own also. First, subtract the 4, then square root the 10. Couple little touches. Since we rounded, let's use approximation symbols. And there's always two answers, unless it's 0 in this case, at plus or minus 3.16. Last one, we'll just do this together. We'll add 7 to both sides, get 3p squared equals 9, divide by 3 on both sides p squared equals 3, square root on both sides, p is approximately plus or minus, okay, I said we'll do it together, but I just did that really fast, so you still might have to, to pause it. Square root of 3 equals 1.73, but don't forget it's plus or minus 1.73. All right, that's it for solving by square roots. Notice every single problem that we did solving by square roots did not have a third. It doesn't say 3p squared plus 3p. It doesn't say x squared plus 4x. 
we normally have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We cannot solve with square roots unless that bx does not exist. We can only solve with square roots if we have the ax squared and the constant c by itself, but none of these had that third term in the middle that had a, had a variable in it. So that's why we're able to solve them that way. Try it. Good luck.